In this video, I'm excited to introduce and give you a dive into the latest version of Nefertiti. So, what is Nef.js and why should you care? Nef.js is a React framework that makes it easy to build server render apps. At the end of last year, Nef.js released a new version with significant changes. This new version, Next.js, introduced a number of exciting new features that promises to improve the developer experience, make it easier to build server rendered React apps, and improve the performance of our apps. But these new releases have raised so many questions. What happened with all the knowledge we have about building apps in Next 12? What is the point of learning the old way? Or shall we only focus on learning Next.js 13? I'll answer these questions today. First of all, let's define server render apps for those who might not know. Server render apps are web applications that are generated on the server and then sent to the client as a fully formed HTML document. This has many benefits. With Nest.js, you can build apps that are optimized for performance and SEO and have a seamless user experience. Nest.js is a powerful tool. But enough about the boring stuff, let's get to the good stuff. Now, let's explore some of the new features and improvements in Nest.js 13. Nest.js 13 introduces a new directory that uses file system based routing and follows a set of naming conventions for different use cases. To create a page, you simply give the directory the name of the root and add page.js or tsx for TypeScript support. And this file will export the components you want to display. If we try to run our app, we are going to get this message in the terminal. The app directory is experimental to enable add up there true to your Nest config.js configuration under experimental. Okay, let's do this. And now we can see our page. As soon as we run our app, we can see two new files have been created automatically. But before we look into that, let me mention that this structure allows you to create components within the same folder, rather than needing to create a separate component components directory. So I'm going to create a new folder called products. And now here I can add another page. So just by doing page.tsx, and now I'm going to paste here this code. And within this uh, folder, I, as I said, can create a subfolder called components, where I'm going to place a component called product.card.tsx. Okay, let's look into layouts. In the old ways, I'd always create a component also called layout that I will import in the root level, in the underscore app file, and it will grab the entire app. So this component will render the header and footer for all pages, and I, I will take a children and render inside each page. Nefjers 13 saves us to do all of this as it provides us with this layout file that runs the entire application so we can share UI between routes. Whenever a route changes to any component that is within the layout, Nest will preserve the state because the layout component is not a mount, avoiding this way expensive renders. The layout can also be nested, so if we want, we can come here and have something specific for this uh, product's route. We could add uh, a new layout then, so layout.tsx, and this will only apply to this root. And let me just demo it to you. Here we can see that in the main page, we see the main layout. And then if we go to products, now we are seeing the specific layout that we created for the products page. Within layouts, we can have template TSX files. This will be similar to the layout, but in this case, um, the state will not be preserved as a new instance of the components will be mount. Okay, suppose you want to create an error component that it should displace in case the page breaks. So we only need to create an error file dot 
px, and this will render in a state of the page. We can also have a, a loading JS and export here a spinner or some kind of message that will render while the data is being fetched. All the components under the app folder are now server components by default. The reason for this is to minimize the amount of JavaScript that is shipped to the client by keeping component code on the server side. This helps to reduce the overall size of the JavaScript bundle, improving this performance and loading time of the page and a faster first content paint. The server components also allow us to access secrets safely and backend resources. If we need to convert a server component to a client component, we need to add use client to the top of our file. Then we can go ahead and use hooks, event handlers, or browser-only APIs. The data fetching solution for React that everyone has been waiting for. Next.js 13 also brought us a big update about data fetching, and it has made this so much easier. One of the biggest changes is the ability to write plain JavaScript functions that uses fetch to retrieve data and await the result in a component. This eliminates the need to pass cross back and forward between the client and the server. And also functions such as static site generation, server side rendering, and ISR no longer apply as such. The data fetching now revolves around caching. By default, all pages are cached to provide the performance of a static site. So in this example, Nest will catch this route. If we need to fetch new data from the server on every request, we can change that by using the option cache no store, and this would be equivalent of using SSR. To maintain the incremental static regeneration ISR, we will need to add the next option and then add the revalidation time in seconds. So this will regenerate our page in the server after 30 seconds. If we are not using the fetch method to fetch data, we can still define our caching strategy by exporting these variables to change things like caching behavior and runtime. All of this allows us to optimize the performance of our app and ensure that the data is fresh when needed. Another key feature Nestjs has introduced is a new optimized code splitting. This also helps to reduce the size of the app by up to 50% to improve its performance. Code splitting is the process of splitting the application's bundle into smaller chunks required by each entry point. The goal is to improve the application's initial load time by only loading the code required to run that page. Next.js has built-in support for code splitting. Each file inside your pages directory will be automatically code split into its own JavaScript bundle during the build step. Suppose we have an e-commerce page. We have a header and in our main body content we have a long list of products, then at the bottom we have a footer. The user will only see the footer when it scrolls to the bottom of the page. So in this case we can manually split our code and only load the footer when the component needs to be rendered, when the user reaches that point. The module dynamic allows us to split our code into separate modules that can be loaded as needed, that can be loaded on demand. To do this, first we need to import dynamic. So import dynamic from Nash dynamic. So we can say const dynamic footer is equal and uh, here we are dynamically going to import our footer component. So dynamic, import, and we just need to import our component just like this. So the dynamic footer is a dynamic import that will only be loaded when the component is rendered. If we are in the client, we can add just here SSR equal false to disable server rendering. This is useful if the component relies on browser API like window. And we can also use this with external libraries. And this is not all. Next.js 13 also introduces many other improvements and plugins, 
such as improving the support for TypeScript, making it easier to spot bugs, or introducing a type's autocompletion. Also improving the developer experience with the Next.js CLI and support the latest version of React. All of these new features can be adopted incrementally. This means you can still write Next.js code the old way. Next.js also has lots of new features that are still beta and not yet ready for production use. Getting started with Next.js in 2023 will be confusing at first. It will be. Now there are two different ways to structure our apps and two different ways to create server-side page components. There are new components like the link and the image that make out the previous one a legacy one. If you are just starting to learn Next.js, you might wonder if it's worth learning concepts such as SSR, SSD, ISR, or knowing how the file directory worked up to this moment. Shall we still learn the previous Next.js? Are these concepts deprecated as of Next 13? I say no, two main reasons. Next 13 just came out as per this video. Most companies are still adopting it. Some of the features are in beta, so it is too risky for the companies to jump into implementing them. And also, it will take time to completely migrate a big app to this new paradigm. And I bet there will be some projects that it might stay as Nest 12, maybe forever, if the company feels it's not worth updating it. I work on projects written in React class components that never really made the transition to function components. And two, Nest 13 is a huge leap forward. It's important to understand where Nest is coming from and the reasons behind all of these changes because only then you'll be able to appreciate and understand this new paradigm. So take your time, learn Nest 12 and 13, compare both of them, read Nest.js documentation and start using Nest.js 13 features. If you are not yet ready to adapt them, still play around with them and keep an eye on these features as they provide valuable insights into the future direction of the framework. Now is the perfect time to give it a try and see how it can help you build better apps. So if you want to master Nest.js 13, I think it's important that you first complete this tutorial about Nest.js 12 to understand what Nest.js is and how Nest.js works. And then you can migrate to the version 13 once the features are not in beta and they are more stable.